called dharmakaya yes dharmakaya the dharma they're all this ineffable uh, unspeakable in a way undefinable yes, yes. unimaginable yes oh yes in my book knowledge and sacred my gifer lectures i deal very succinctly with this point at the very beginning and i i understand of course belief is more than belief i think i have a thank god a kind of intuitive knowledge that there cannot be two absolutes. Otherwise, the absolute would not be absolute, the relative. And since the ultimate reality is absolute, there must be only one ultimate reality. And the fact they have these different names does not mean they're referring to different realities. They're referring to the same reality in different names. Mm -hmm. Because we live in the world of multiplicity. As Rumi says, using the Persian, Arabic, and Turkish word for silk. He says silk is silk, whether you use this word, that word, or the other. The Vedantists use gold. Yeah, of gold, course, of course. You have this in all of our traditions. I think that's a very important point for this day and age of ours, in which you have, uh, for a while, things were going much better. After the Second World War, the West was opening up to a deeper understanding of Oriental traditions, Hinduism, Islam, Taoism, Buddhism, and so forth. Buddhism is faring a bit what better, but Islam is faring worse because of 9-11, this, that, Iran revolution, this and that. And now it's spreading other, to other religions, a kind of backlash in the West against inclusivism. And uh, I believe in traditional inclusivism to the extent of an inclusivism that includes exclusivism, mm -hmm. that even accepting those who reject us, universality. I want to go back again to the scientific worldview as, as understood today. So there's the physical world, uh, space-time, matter, energy. Um, there is today a deeper understanding of the quantum world of more or less quantum information and probabilities and uh, entanglement. And then today also science defines uh, a non-local realm, which is uh, beyond space-time, in fact, just a field of possibilities. That's a kind of a scientific uh, worldview. In, in the Vedanta, they speak about the physical, energetic body. They speak about the subtle body, mind, intellect, and ego. And then they talk about the spiritual body, the causal world, with the soul, uh, more universal domain, Atman Brahman, as you said, the ground of the individual, the ground of the universe. In, the Buddhists use uh, Nirmanakaya and Sambhogakaya and Dharmakaya. And recently, in the last century, you had the great Christian theologian, Thierry de Chardin, who spoke about the biosphere, the noosphere, and the theosphere. Does that model uh, relate to you in, in the Sufi Islamic traditions as well? Certainly not Teilhard de Chardin because he was an evolutionist. And I believe in Hindi Agarwa. Say that again. The world egg of Hinduism. Yes. All realities of this Garba. cosmic cycle were already contained in the world egg. Evolution is not going from nothing to something. Christ coming out of mud. So I don't believe in Teilhard de Chardin's view. Oh, I've, you don't. I've, I've written very extensively against that. But the other views, yes, the other views that you express, uh, definitely. But the important thing is, uh, I think we have to, have to notice, is that quantum mechanics has actually discovered a world of potentiality in the Aristotelian sense. We should not be confused with the subtle body, which is above the physical body. 
Available on CuriosityStream. Watch premium factual shows at CuriosityStream.com.